on cloud. So is there anything that anyone wants to talk about? Ignore my stuff on here. I guess it saved whenever I was working on it the last time. And I typoed like a lot of my answers. <laughs> like this one, I had got nine and negative five. Oh yeah, see, nine and negative five. But when I typed it in, for some reason, I typed it in backwards. I, I There were a few of them like that. I was like, wow, I need to go to sleep. <laughs> It was awful. So there's a bunch of them in there. They're pretty close to the correct answer because, like I said, there's typos and stuff. But um, or if it was like a multiple choice, there were two of them that were like too similar that I ended up picking the wrong one. On paper, I have it right, but over there, I did not. Um, so was there anyone that had seen maybe a few of them that stuck out to you? Like this one's pretty hard. I don't want. I don't know how to do this one or there's only 24. We have two hours. It would not be possible to go through all 24 if I had to start them all from scratch. Like if I had to read you the problem and then go work everything out and talk it out as I go, right? Um, however, I did do it, all the problems because you saw I took the quiz. I did them all already. So it should give me time to cover all 24 if you want me to go through that. Um, but if you have some that you want me to concentrate on that you want to see first, let me know. Is there anything that anyone wants to look at first before I go through all of them? Because if I go through all of them, I mean, I'm not going to go fast, but it'll go faster than normal, if that makes sense. OK. Okay, well, I think I need to toggle back and forth between my camera and the questions just because I kind of wrote the instructions on the paper. So I might not need to go back and forth. Um, but there was one in particular that was weird that I want to mention. Okay. Um, so there were 24 problems. There are 10 problems on this test. And so then, of course, there are 10 points each, right? Um, you are going to have those for sure. I know you're going to have five of them that are going to be one to solve by substitution, one to solve using the elimination, one to solve using the gauss jardin elimination in the matrix, and then one using the Kramer's rule. And then I think you even have one doing the matrix one, but with the inverse. Okay. So that inverse one is super important because it's testing you really on two things. It's testing on, do you know how to find an inverse? And then two, do you know how to use it to solve the equation, right? So instead of giving you a problem to find the inverse and then a separate problem where you have to use the inverse, I just made it one giant problem, okay? But try not to avoid that one because that one's like really important. It's gonna hit two things that I need to test, okay? Is there a problem like that on page two? There is, it's like, yeah, I think the big one is like that. Do that one. Sure, sure. Um, I think though you're going to have those five for sure. You're also going to have one where you're just giving me the dimensions of a matrix. So that one's nice, right? You're going to get easy 10 points if you know how to do the, dim the dimensions. You're also going to have one that you have to change it into a, a augmented matrix. So you look at the equation and you put all the numbers in the box, right? And those are, those are going to be some good ones because that's like an easy 20 points as long as you know how to do it. I cannot for the life of me remember what the last three were. I don't remember. <laughs> I'm sure they'll be in here somewhere. So yes, I did see one of the ones with the inverse. So there was one that was silly that was like, here's the inverse, now use it to solve. Now that one's super easy, right? But I think you have one where you have to find the inverse. Oh, and you have to multiply, that's another one. There's one where you're going to have to multiply matrices and another one where you're going to have to do like the linear combination. Like not that one, where is it? Like this one, where you have to do that, okay? So you have to like multiply one of them by a number, multiply the other one by a number and then subtract them, okay? Um, so we definitely have one. So this one just says find the inverse and it goes through the whole process, but we want one. Here we go, this one. It says use an inverse matrix to solve the system, okay? Um, and so it is a two by two matrix. 
So the first thing I did was I put it, the whole system into its matrix form, right? So you've got the coefficients times the variables and then equal to the constants, right? That's the matrix form of the system. It's not an augmented matrix. The augmented matrix is when you only have this box, a line, and then the uh, constants next to it, right? That's the augmented matrix. So make sure you know the difference between matrix form of a system, which looks like this, a coefficient matrix times the variable matrix equal to the constant matrix versus an augmented matrix where it's the coefficient and then you have that bar and then it's the constants, okay? So there's two different ways to do that and make sure you're doing the correct one. When you're talking about using an inverse to solve, you have to use this form, okay? So that's what I did there. Then we know that if I put this over to the other side, I have to do the inverse of it. So there's my matrix equation again, but notice that I have the inverse of this function times the constants, right? And so then the problem is, is I need to figure out what that inverse is before I can multiply it by this, right? And because it's just a little tiny two by two, I went ahead and used the matrix formula instead of going off to the side and solving the matrix the way you would do it for the three by threes, right? Because for the three by threes, you would put all your junk over here, you'd put the identity over there, and then you try to make this side look like the identity, and then you'd have the inverse on that side, right? That's the long way to do that. If you have a three by three, you have to do it like this, okay? But if you have a two by two, you have a choice. You can use the formula, which is given to you in your note sheet, or you can um, do it the other way, okay? To me, this is faster when it's a two by two. So I do use the formula, okay? And the formula basically says you do one over the um, determinant, which means you do these multiplied together, which I have there, five times five, minus, and then these guys multiplied together, right? That's how you do the determinant. And then over here, these two guys switch sides, but because they're both fives, it looks like the same thing, right? And then these two switch signs. So it becomes negative and it becomes negative, okay? And then you have your thing there. Now, I'm gonna show you the formula because it is on the top of the test. I just have to be careful not to go too far into the test that you see the first problem. Dun, dun. So you do have the steps for solving substitution. You do have the steps for solving by elimination. You have the steps, of course you have to understand all of that, right? But you do have the steps for the Gauss Jardin you do have how to get the determinant of a little two by two. You do kind of have the rules for the uh, Kramer's rule. And then it tells you right there, real tiny, but you can't see it. It tells you right here to find the determinant of a three by three, um, augment with the first two columns. That means you write the first two columns on the side, remember? And then add the three diagonal entries from upper left to lower right and then subtract the diagonal entries going from lower left to upper right. Okay, so you gotta go both directions, right? Um, it's trying to explain that whole process right there in a little sentence, okay? Um, and then here's the formula for finding an inverse for a two by two, okay? And then you do have, don't wanna go too far, I think that's where it stops. Um, and then you do have how to do it for an inverse, right? You're gonna put your matrix here on this side. You're gonna put the identity on that side. You're gonna do all your operations to get this side to look like the identity. And then magically this side is the inverse, okay? So, but it does separate them. So you do have instructions on how to do each kind of inverse, okay? So we are doing this one. We needed to do the inverse. So we did that determinant and then notice that these guys switch sides, right? And then these guys switch signs, okay? So it is in there. So going back to my problem, that was what I ended up with. So I just went from there. Um, I kept my X, Y here. And I realized that after all this computation, 25 minus six is 19. And this little matrix stayed like that. 
Now, I thought that it would be easier to multiply the two matrices together first and then put in the fraction. Because like I said, I don't like fractions, right? So if I can wait on the fractions, I will, okay? I didn't want to put that in there because I would not want to multiply 5 over 19 times negative 8 and then negative 2 over 19 times 1, right? It's just a bunch, a bunch of fractions. I don't like them. So what I did was I multiplied these first. So I did that top row times the column, right? So 5 times the negative 8 and then negative 2 times the 1 and then you add those together. Then the bottom row times that column. So the negative three times the negative eight, and then the five times the negative one, and add the two results together. So in the end, I ended up with negative 38 for the top entry, and then 19 for the bottom entry. And then now it makes it super easy when I go put in the, uh, the fraction, right? So negative 38 times one over 19 is this, and then 19 times one over 19 is this. But both of those actually reduce to just negative two and one, okay? Um, and so then that's the answer for this one. But this is a perfect example of what you'll see. If it does, the test does ask you, if that's that last problem that I can't think of, um, if it does ask you to find an inverse of a three by three, you have to do the whole row operation way to do it, okay? And I did have one, I think it was on a previous, previous example. Oh, I have this number here. Yes, it was on this one, 17. So 17 wanted to find an inverse, but it's a three by three, right? So when it's like that, it tells you in the directions, but it doesn't like give you explicitly like how to do it, right? But you have to put the matrix they give you and then the identity matrix on the other side. And then your goal is to make this one look like the identity matrix. Just like you saw, right, using the Gauss uh, Jordan elimination, it's the same thing, except instead of having just one little column over here, you've got two more, okay? But the process is still the same. Make that guy a one, use it to make these guys zero, then make this middle guy a one, and then use it to make those guys zero, and then make the bottom guy one, and use that one to make these guys zero, right? That process doesn't change. Whatever happens to these numbers is just what happens, okay? That process of it changing is what causes the inverse to happen. Okay. Um, do you want me to have? Do you have any other ones you want me to go over specifically, or do you just want me to start from the beginning and go? I think it'll be a little bit less confusing if we start at the beginning. <laughs> so let's see. So for the first one, it just wants us to solve the system. This is the chapter nine material. So it's just giving you the system and then asking you to solve it using substitution. So no matrices in the beginning of the test, okay? Um, it's a solve substitution. So the steps, let's go look at those steps so that you can relate what you're gonna have available with what you're gonna have to do, okay? So if I go through these steps, it says step one is solve one of the equations for either variable. Now remember I mentioned to you that there's a way to know which one to choose. If you can pick a variable that's positive and all by itself, right? So if I go over to the matrix they gave me, they did give me an equation with one of the variables positive and all by itself, right? No coefficient in front of it. And that's this top equation and it's the Y variable. So the first thing I did for step one was solve equation one for Y. And so to do that, I just had to minus the six X over. And so then I got Y equal to 49 minus six X. Then the second step is to substitute that expression that you got for step one into the other equation. So I never messed with the bottom equation, right? So that means that this expression that I got for y has to get plugged into that um, bottom equation. And so that's what I did here. I put 2x minus 7, and instead of y, I put what y was equal to, right? The 49 minus 6x. Then from there, you just solve for whatever variable you have. The only variable I have here is X, so I'm solving for X. So I distributed my negative seven and I got these two terms. I combined my like terms. I moved over the 343 and I eventually divided by the 44, right? And so then I got this value. And then the last step is to substitute that value back into what you got from equation one. So from equation one, I ended up with this, didn't I? 
And so all I did was plug that nine into this expression up here at the top. And when I did that, I did my calculations and I found out that the Y was negative five. Okay, and so then my solution is just that positive nine for X and then the negative five for Y. Okay, so that's the whole substitution process. I think there's another one just so you have extra practice. Um, don't worry about scribbling this down if it goes too fast because I am posting them, right? Okay, I will post them. So you'll be able to see everything all written out. And if you're one of those that has to like write stuff down to like register, because I am that way, just rewrite everything I wrote down. <laughs> okay, and just write it all over again. And it helps to kind of like seal it in your brain. It sounds silly because it's like a waste of time, but it works for me personally. Okay. Okay. So another one solving for substitution. Now this one, you have to be careful because even if that was a plus sign, you really want to um, choose the expression, the one that doesn't have any kind of like powers or square roots or anything weird on it. Okay. So immediately my brain would have said, I need to use the bottom equation to substitute. But then you have to choose, well, which letter are you going to solve for in that bottom equation? Are you going to solve for the X or are you going to solve for the Y? And in this case, because Y does not have a number in front, that's going to be the guy that's easier to solve for, right? So I took equation two and I solved for Y just by minusing 2X over. So I literally just got Y equal to negative 2X. Then I have to substitute that expression into the other equation, the other equation being the top one. So I wrote x squared minus, and instead of minus y, I put minus the expression that I have equal to y. So then I have to solve this for x, because that's the only variable I have. Those two negatives do become positive. And then here, it is a quadratic, so I am factoring it. Factored out the common x, and I ended up with x plus 2. So I set that one equal to 0, I set that one equal to 0, and I got this value. I got two values though, right? Which is different from the first problem. The first problem, I only got one. So I basically have to do that last step twice, okay? So I have to plug in the zero to what I got from step one. And then I also have to plug in the negative two into what I got for step one. So for the zero, here it is, y equals negative two times zero. And then for the negative two, I have y equals negative two times negative two. And so then these are the corresponding y values. So the point for this one is going to be zero and zero. And then the point for this one is gonna be negative two and four. But I noticed that in the web assign, it had like smaller X value in a box and then larger X value in a box, okay? So between these two X values, this one's actually smaller than that one, right? So I had to put that one, that point in the smaller box and then the zero, zero in the larger box, okay? If this was a positive number, then these probably would have been switched, right? The zero would have been the smaller one. So just pay attention to what values you get so you know which one goes in where, right? Okay, so those are the two substitution problems. So essentially, what's the difference between those two? One of them is just two linear equations, and the other one has a nonlinear equation, right? I can't tell you right now, like I can't tell you which one it is going to be, but it's going to be one of those two kinds, okay? So as long as you are able to work through that process of substitution, you should be okay, okay? Now, the next method is the elimination method. And so this method is only for uh, linear equations. So you won't see the nonlinears in this uh, problem, okay? So no powers, no radicals, nothing weird, okay? So for this one, let's go look at the rules for elimination. So solve one of the equations in substitution, substitute it into the other equation, solve the resulting equation, then substitute your solution from step three into one of the original equations. I don't, I usually sub, sub it into the one I got from step one, and then write your solutions as an ordered pair. This is always optional to check your answers. I didn't, but it's nice to do it, just so you know if you're right or not. For our problem, this one's now an elimination for number three. So it says, write both equations in standard form. If any coefficients are fractions, make sure you clear them, okay? How do you clear fractions? 
Right. If you see denominators, multiply whatever that denominator is or whatever the common denominator is, you multiply it to all of them. And when you reduce everything, there's no more fractions. OK, um, let me see. And I think in standard form, these are already good. Let me go flash over to my paper. You have your X's, your Y's, and then equal to your constants, right? So it's already in standard form. And I don't think we've had any problems where they haven't been. So you're safe there as far as that step, OK? I don't even think we've seen too many with fractions either. I think you might have had one in the homework. Um, but from there, at once it looks like it's supposed to look, you just go and make sure that the coefficients of one of the variables is opposites, OK? So you have to decide which variable you're going to eliminate. And then you might have to multiply one of the equations or both of the equations so that the coefficients are the same but opposite signs, OK? Once you have them like that, you can add them together, which will eliminate that variable. And then you solve for the remaining variable. Once you're done with that, substitute what you get into any of the originals, and then you can solve for the other variable. Once you know the two variable answers, you just write your answer as an ordered pair, and then you can check them if you want. So let's go through that process. I decided to eliminate X. It really wouldn't have mattered if I had decided to eliminate Y, because for both of them, wouldn't I have to have multiplied by five, right? If I want to eliminate X, that would have multiplying by five would have given me a negative 25. And had I chosen to eliminate Y, I still would have had to multiply by five, okay? Which is why consequently what ends up happening is that these both zero out, right? But coincidentally, this side also zeroed out, okay? And as long as both of them are zero, then you get infinitely many solutions, okay? If you get zero over here, but not a zero over there, what is your answer? No solution. Okay, good. I think we do run into that, but just heads up, right? Okay. So it tells you in the box, like if it's no, so if it's infinitely many solutions, make sure you write one variable in terms of a, and then the other one will just be a. Okay. So what I always do is I always let the x equal the a, and then plug that into an original equation, and then solve for y. So I went and took the bottom equation. And I solved for y and I got this. And then I just plugged in the a right there. If you plug in the a right there, doesn't the y expression look like this? And so then my point is going to be a for x and then the 4 plus 5a for y. OK? So that's how that will look. It's not too, too bad. Now here's another one with elimination. Because what does it look like? We want to see all the three cases. because. I can't tell you which case you're going to get on the test, right? So I wanted to make sure that you had all three cases on the review. So you've just seen an elimination where you get infinitely many solutions. Now you're going to see an elimination where you get an actual one point solution. And then you will also see an elimination problem that has no solution. Okay, so I wanted you to have all three cases. So for this one, we're going to pick a variable. I didn't want to have to eliminate X because they don't have opposite signs, right? And not only that, they both have coefficients in front of them, which means I would have had to multiply the top one and the bottom one, okay? But I noticed over here with the Y's, they already have opposite signs, don't they? And this one doesn't have a number in front, which makes it easier because then I only have to multiply the bottom equation by something, okay? Since I want that to match, they'll need to multiply the bottom equation by four, right? So I did four times the equation two, and I'll add the equation one. So all of these guys times four gives me these three entries. And then the top equation is right underneath. And then I combined everything, those wipe out. So I get 16x equals negative eight, and then divided by 16, and I got this guy. The fact that I got a number and it's just one number means I'm going to have one solution, OK? And if I want to know what the y that goes with it, I just plug that into any one of the equations, any one, OK? I chose to plug it into the top one because the top one had a positive y value, OK? That's the only reason why I chose the top one. I could have also plugged it in the bottom one. It just didn't, OK? So when I plug it in the top one, 4 times negative 1 half gives me negative 2. 
I added the two over and then I divided by the four and I ended up with this reduced number three halves. So this is what I got for X and then this is what I got for Y, right? So that's the other kind of solution you can have, just a regular solution, right? And then finally, the last kind of solution you can have is this one, right? So let's see that. This one we did get stuck. They are both opposite signs. So I truly had to decide which one to eliminate. For some reason, it looks like I chose Y to eliminate. Um, and so when I looked at Y, I said, well, they already have the opposite signs. But if these numbers are not the same, I just swap them. Okay. So I multiply the top equation, equation one, by n, and I multiply the bottom equation by the four. So I'm just basically trying to switch these. Okay. And by doing that, it makes them have the same answer in the end. Right. So the top equation times 10 will be negative 60, positive 40y, and then 90. And then the bottom equation times four gives me positive 60, forgot my letter here x and then negative 40y and then this times this actually is negative 92 isn't it made it some errors over there so these actually wipe out and these wipe out but i don't get 182 do i what do i get there negative two right regardless though it's still not zero isn't it <laughs> okay so zero can't equal negative two and so that's why there's no solution Okay, let me write this better so when somebody looks at it later, they can tell that that's actually a negative. Okay, now number six, just ask you what are the dimensions? I also put the word order because I couldn't remember which word they used on the test. I couldn't remember if it was order or dimensions, but I know it was one of those two words, okay? So if they do ask you for the order of this thing, make sure that you're counting the number of rows first and then the number of columns, okay? So this one actually has one, two, three rows, but it has one, two, three, four columns. And so then the dimensions are just three by four. Okay, so that one's a nice one. Make sure you know how to do the dimensions because that's a quick, easy 10 points, right? Make sure you've got those. This is another one that's super easy. And so make sure you know how to do this one as well, okay? It says, write the augmented matrix. So that's the one where you take all the coefficients and then they have like these three little dots, right? And then they have the constants on the other side. So it's literally very straightforward. Positive five, positive two, 10, negative six, positive nine, and negative 29. And that's what we have there, okay? So definitely make sure you know how to do that because that's another quick, easy 10 points, okay? For these two problems, you do not need to show any work. I mean, there's really nothing to show, right? You just know it or not, okay? So those two, definitely nothing you need to write down, okay? Um, now this one's going, oh, it's the same thing. It wants me to write the augmented matrix. So basically, we don't know if we're going to get just two variables, right? Or if we're going to have three variables on the problem that we have to write the augmented matrix. So I wanted you to have an example of both, right? So in this one, it's still very straightforward. The only little um, curveball here is the fact that there's a Z missing right here, right? And when one of those variables is missing, what are you supposed to put for it? A zero there, okay? So that's the only big difference between the last one and this one. Is it's got a little curveball, and it's a bigger size, right? But the numbers are still the same positive one, negative one, seven, and seven, six, negative five, positive one, negative one, positive seven, positive one, that zero, and then this zero, okay? Please, please, please make sure you know how to do that because it's so super easy. I don't want anybody to get striked out 10 points. Not only that, pay real close attention to those choices, okay? That's probably gonna be where you're gonna make the error. It's not whether or not you know how to write it, but whether or not you pick the exact one that you're supposed to pick, because there will be two that look real, real close to each other, okay? So just look at the choices real closely. Don't try to rush it. Okay, this next one says for me to write the system represented by this augmented matrix, and then it asks me to use back substitution, something like this, use back substitution to solve 
the system. I'm going to go look at it real quick. It says something like that, but I don't know what it says exactly. Number nine. And it's one of the ones I typed up. It's supposed to be a four, but I put a three. I don't know why. They're not even close to each other on the number pad. I don't know why I put four or put three. Um, but, oh, that's it. Oh, yeah, it says it down here. So first, I want you to write them in their equation form. And then it says use back substitution to solve. OK. So over here, I wrote down my system. Then remember, this is 1x minus 4y equal to 6, right? And then the bottom is 0x's plus 1y equal to negative 1. That's this one. And so all I did was clean this up. I don't have to write that 1, do I? So I just wrote x minus 4y equal to 6. And here, I don't need to write this expression at all. And I don't need to write that 1 either. So I just wrote y equals negative 1. So then they said go back substitution. Well, since I already know what y is, just plug in that y in for y. So 4 minus 4 times that negative 1 gives me x plus 4 equal to 6. And then I minus 4 on both sides, and I got x equal to 2. OK, and so then this was the solution there. So notice what I have here. I have a 4, right? But on a computer, I put a 3 for some reason. Okay, now we're getting into the matrix. So the matrix solving. So this one says to solve using the gauss jardin elimination. And I think there's another one, a three by three. I think that's all I give you is just two because we don't know which one we're gonna get, right? I'll tell you right now, it's most likely, I don't know if I remember correctly, but probably not gonna be the three by three. And the reason I say that is because that one takes forever, right? And we don't have like that much class time for us to be there all day long, okay? If for some reason they do give you a three by three, my advice to you is to save that for last. Do not do that problem in the middle of the test. Leave that one for last so that if you don't finish it, it's just one problem you didn't finish, okay? Whereas if it's number five and you get stuck on it and you're all adamant about finishing it, <laughs> you're going to miss out on the other five problems, right? If you run out of time. So do the gauss jardin If there's a three by three, do that one last, okay? That's just a test taking technique. Always leave the hard ones for last. So the first thing we have to do for this two by two is put it in its augmented matrix. And I say two by two because there's two equations and two variables, okay? That's why I always call this two by two. The three by three, I call it that because it has three equations and then three variables, right? So for the two by two, put it in the augmented matrix. Negative two, six, negative 28, positive one, positive two, negative 11. And then you've got to start getting the ones and the zeros, all of that business, right? Keep in mind, you've got to work column by column. Do not start trying to change this column until you're done messing around with the first one, okay? And in the columns, you always have to get the ones where they belong first and then the zeros where they belong in that column, okay? Another thing to remember is the only way to change the ones is to multiply by the reciprocals. That's the only way you should be changing anything to a one, okay? If you have to change things to zeros, that's when you have to like add two rows together or multiply one of them by something and then add them together, okay? So for me, Instead of, I could have chosen to multiply all of these by one over negative two. That would have been the reciprocal of this. And all of these are even, so that would have been totally okay to do, right? I wouldn't have had fractions, nothing. But for some reason, my brain said, don't do that. <laughs> Just switch row one and row two, and you'll have the one where it's supposed to go, okay? So that's what I did. If I had chosen to do it the other way, it doesn't matter. This would have all looked different, but the answer still would have been the same. Okay, so all of y'all's choices are going to be different, whether what you choose to do first, second, it's going to affect things, okay, but I know how to look at them, I'll be able to grade it, it doesn't have to go the same way I did it, does that make sense, okay, if you would have chose to divide by negative two across the board on row one, that would have been perfectly fine, as long as you did it correctly, right, so I swapped them. So the top row became the one, two, negative 11. And now the bottom row is these guys, okay? 
Then I started saying, well, I got to turn this one into a zero, right? So I needed a positive two. I have to use this one to make that a to make that a zero. I did positive two times row one, and then I added that row two. And because the, I'm adding the row two, that's the one that becomes the new one, right? So two times row one made me a two, a four, and a negative 22. And then row two underneath is just there. And then when I combined them, I got these three values. Yeah. So I wrote those three values in the new row two. Row one stayed exactly the same. First column is now completely done. So now is where I can move over to the second column, okay? And then my goal is to change this guy into a one, right? So that I have that diagonal of ones. And remember the only way to change something into the one is to multiply by the reciprocal, okay? So I just did one over the number that was there times the row two so I could get that new row two with the one at the bottom, okay? So zero times one tenth is still gonna stay a zero, but 10 times one tenth was where this one came from. And negative 50 times one tenth is where the negative five came from. And you may have to use your calculator for those. And that's totally okay. Just don't go too fast, right? 10 times one over 10. Oh, I had too many times in there. I get one. And then negative 50 times one over 10 does give me the negative five. So always, if there's fractions or anything like that, I always just double check in your calculator because you don't want to make a mistake. Otherwise, the rest is bad, right? So we're here, we got that one, fantastic. But now we have to use it to get this guy to go to a zero. So I wanna turn this into a negative two, right? So that if this is now a negative two, when I add together, I'll get that zero, right? So we're gonna do negative two times row two, and then we're gonna add row one. And so I'm adding row one, that's the one that's gonna get replaced, okay? So the bottom guys times negative two gave me these three values. And then row one, I just put underneath and then I combined them and I got these values and that becomes my new row one. So there's my row one, my old row two, but I'm finished now, right? Don't I have the identity, the ones and the diagonal and then the other guys is zeros. So once you get it like this and this looks like the identity, you have X equal to negative one and you have Y equal to negative five. That's what I wrote there. So the point is this. Okay, now the three by three is the same thing. It's just, of course, got extra steps because you don't have just this, right? You have a whole nother row and a whole nother column, okay? So there are more steps, but what you're doing is the exact same process, okay? So the first thing I did here was to put it in that augmented matrix. So we have the two, the negative one, the three, and then the positive 18. We have no X's here, so I put a zero, and then a two, and then a negative one, 12. Here we've got the seven, the negative five, no Z's, so a zero there, and then the nine. Make sure you plug in those zeros, right, if they're missing. So I did need to change this to a one. There was no other one over here, so it didn't make sense to swap anything, right? So I just did the reciprocal, but unfortunately, it wouldn't have mattered if I had divided all of these by two. I was gonna end up with fractions because of these guys. Or if I had swapped these and then divided everybody by seven, I'm still gonna have two fractions, aren't I? Okay, so for me, there was no way of avoiding the fractions on this one. So I was like, fine. I'd rather deal with halves than sevens. So I just took the top one. So we do one over whatever this is to turn it to a one. So I did one over two times a row one. So this guy times a half is one. This guy times a half is negative half. This times a half is three halves. And then this times a half is nine. And you can see I almost accidentally made a negative three halves, but it's not supposed to be negative. Okay, now, the other two rows just stay exactly the same. Those are not changing, okay? Now what I have to do is I have to use this one to change this to a zero and this to the zero. This one we got lucky though, right? It's already a zero. So we really only had to work with that. 
I'm going to need this to turn into a negative seven so that when I add that, I will get the zero, right? So that means I need to multiply this top row by a negative seven. So then I get negative seven, that becomes negative and a negative becomes positive seven halves. A positive and a negative becomes negative 21 over two. And then a positive and a negative becomes negative 63, okay? Row three, I wrote down underneath. I did my computations. I ended up with these values, gobs and gobs of fractions. It was horrible. Okay, I have to go really slow when there's fractions because my brain is just like, it goes into a frenzy mode. So zero, negative three halves, negative 21 over two, negative five fourths. Row two does not change, right? It had the zero just like we wanted. And then row one is not the one that's changing either. It's only row three that's changing, okay? So from there, this whole first column is completely done. I don't need to work with it. But now that I move on to this column, this is where the one is supposed to go, right? So in order for me to get that one, I have to multiply by the reciprocal of this number. So I did one half times the second row, which gives me my new second row. So zero times a half is still zero. Two times a half is one. This number times a half is negative one half and 12 times a half is six, okay? Then now I need to use this one to get the two zeros here and here. So I did the process over here and I only rewrote the matrix once, okay? So I'm gonna cover this cause that has nothing to do with this whole next step process. So the first thing is, is I need this to be a positive one half so that when I add these together, I'll get that zero, right? So I did positive one half times row two, right? And then I added the row one to get me that new row one. So here's all these guys multiplied by a half. I get zero, this will become a half, this would become negative one fourth, multiply it in a calculator if you need to. And then this would become three. Row one went right underneath. And then I added these in the calculator. Well. These I didn't have to add in the calculator. This one I did add in the calculator and it gave me that, okay? And then this one I didn't need the calculator, that's just 12. So that became my new row one. Row two has the, the one where I want it in this column. So I just wrote down row two, but then I realized I need to change this guy in row three into a zero. So in order to do that, this has to be a positive three halves so that when I add the negative three halves, it goes to zero. So I did positive three halves times row two, add the row three, and they'll give me my new row three. So let's see, zero times three halves is zero. One times three halves is three halves. This I did in a calculator. Negative one half times three halves is negative three fourths. And this one I did in a calculator too. Three halves times six is nine. I put row three right underneath and then did these computations. This one I did do in the calculator and it came out to negative 45 over four. This one I could do on my own and I got negative 45. That becomes my new row three. So notice row three is now that, right? Now, I next need to, this column is now completely done. I can move on to the last column and you need to get the one here first, okay? So to do that, I have to multiply by the reciprocal of that number. It's not a whole number, so I don't do one over it, right? It's a fraction. So when you talk about the fraction reciprocals, it's just flipping it over. So I did four on the top and the negative 45 at the bottom, okay? But that has to get multiplied to everybody in row three. Well, zero times this, not gonna change. Zero times that's not gonna change. But this times this comes out to positive one. And this times this comes out to positive four, okay? And if you don't see it or know how to do it on your own, just put them in the calculator, multiply them in the calculator, it'll tell you what you're gonna get, okay? So that's fantastic, but from there, I still need to get the two zeros here, okay? So I did the two steps and then I wrote the matrix once, okay? So let's see, row three is exactly the way I want it. So I left row three alone, okay? But I am gonna have to manipulate row two and row one. For some reason, I went this way, instead of downward, it doesn't matter, okay? Just as long as both of them are getting turned to zero at some point, okay? So what I said is I'm gonna need this to be a one half so that when I add that, it goes to zero. So I did one half times row three, and then I added the row two to get me that new row two. 
So all of these guys times a half gave me zero, zero, half, and two. Then row two went right underneath, combined these, that went to zero like I wanted, and I got an eight. So that became my new row two. So you see all of those entries here on row two, okay? Now we're gonna go and move on to try to get that guy to become a zero. Well, then this needs to become a negative five-fourths, right? So we did negative five-fourths times row three plus the row one, and we'll get a new row one. So all of these guys times negative five-fourths turned out to give me zero, zero, negative five-fourths, and a negative five. Then I put row one's entries underneath, and when I combined them, that went to zero like we wanted, and consequently, we ended up with a seven. So top row becomes one, zero, zero, seven. This is exactly the way it's supposed to look now, right? So that means X, just X, no Y's and Z's equals seven. No X's, but one Y, no Z's equals eight. And then no X's, no Y's, but a Z equals four, right? So we have seven, eight, and four, and that's it. Okay? It just takes a long time with those three by threes, okay? Okay, so that is the one that I strongly suggest that you just wait until the very, very end to do that gosh darn damn problem, okay? I mean, you don't have to listen to me, but <laughs> that's just my advice to leave that one for last, okay? Okay, now there were some other things that we learned how to do with matrices, and that's to add them, subtract them, multiply them, and find inverses, right? So, of course, we're going to eventually get to those kinds of things, okay? So you do have one problem that does ask you to do something of this nature. You don't have to do all of them. It will only ask you to do one of these. And I think it's the one like this, okay? If I remember correctly, I think it's the one where it has multiple combinations, okay? So I went ahead, they gave me the two matrices and I went and did all of them just so you have examples of each of them, right? But in order to add them, you have to add the corresponding entries, okay? So if I'm taking top left, I have to take top left over here and add those together. If I'm taking top right, I have to take top right and add those together. Then the bottom left and bottom left, add those together. Bottom right and bottom right, add those together, okay? Some people don't write this, and if you don't write that, it's totally okay, okay? This is one of those problems where I do not tell you whether to show me work or not show me work on this one, okay? However, there are some problems that you do have to show me the work, like the Goss Jardin. Is there any way to do that without having writing all the steps? No, right? You have to show something, okay? But on these, really, some people just go, oh, that's three, and then, oh, that's negative two, and then add those together, I get one, and then add those together, I get seven, and they know how to do it right away, okay? And it's okay to do that if you can do that. I write out what I'm doing and where these numbers are coming from because I'm showing you as an instructor, right? So it's different. So subtract is the same way. You just have to make sure you do this entry minus that entry. So I've written it there. Then this entry minus that entry, which I've written here. And then that entry minus this one and this one minus that one. So I've got them all there. And then once you do your computations, you'll figure out what the final entries are gonna look like, okay? Now, when you multiply a matrix, you just multiply every single entry by that number. Okay, so notice what A looked like before, and all I'm doing is multiplying every single one of these numbers by five. Okay, so I end up with positive five, negative five, positive 10, and negative five. Okay, the last one's the one that's harder. You can do it in pieces if you really wanted to. Some people like to multiply all of this by five and then write it down, and then multiply all of this by four and write that one down and put a minus in the middle and then they start doing all the subtraction. It is completely up to do if you wanna do it that way. I did it entry by entry, okay? So what I did was I took the top entry from A and multiplied it by five, and then wrote minus four, the top entry for B, okay? Then I did the same thing for the top right entries. So five times the entry for A minus four times the entry for B, and then five times the entry for A minus four times the entry for B. And then five times the last entry for A minus four times the last entry for B. And then I just did all this in my calculator or in my head 
If you did it in a calculator, you'd go straight over here. It looks like I did it in my head. I did five minus eight, negative five, that would be plus four. 10, that would be plus four. That'd be negative five and negative 32. And so that's where I got all of these numbers from, okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. Um, and then of course you have to multiply them, right? Because before we were only multiplying by numbers, right? We weren't multiplying two matrices together. So now we have to multiply two matrices together. Now it can happen that it is impossible to do. So I wanted you to have an example of both. One where it was possible and then number 14 where it's not possible. Okay, so you do have two, two problems just in case one, well, I don't know which situation you're gonna get, okay? I'm gonna probably do somewhere in the back of my brain, but I took the test a long time ago, so <laughs> I don't remember exactly right now. But what you have to do first to even know if you can multiply them is look at those dimensions, right? So what are the dimensions of this one? This one has three rows, but only two columns, right? So that one's a three by two. And then this one has two rows, but two columns. And so it's a two by two. The middle ones have to be the same. And if they are, then the ends are the ones that give you the result dimensions, okay? So my result is gonna be a three by two. And so in WebAssign, what you're gonna do is you're gonna make sure that your matrix is a three by two. And if it isn't, you're going to have to manipulate it. So let me go, um, let me go and do a new randomization just so that you can see what I'm talking about. What number is this, 13? So 13, see, it already has a three row by two columns, doesn't it? But let's say that's not what I wanted. You can shrink it by going like this, or you can make more columns by going like that, okay? And then you can make less rows if you click, or sorry, if you want more rows, you click that one. And if you want less rows, you click this one. So you can manipulate this matrix into the size you need it, okay? But I need three rows and two columns, don't I? So mine's gonna look like that. And I think that's the way it defaulted. But just in case yours doesn't default to the correct size, you can manipulate it using those arrows, okay? And that's gonna be important on the next problem I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so back to my paper. So since I know it's gonna be that, I already put the little program in my calculator, I mean, in my um, computer to show me a three by two. But for us, we're gonna go through the process, okay? This is complicated. I'm trying to use it my hands, but I also wrote it down. So you're gonna take this top row, these two numbers times those two guys in that row. And notice where my fingers are. My pointer finger is at negative one and my middle finger is on eight, right? And when I go over here, doesn't my pointer finger point to three and my middle finger to the zero? So those are the ones I need to multiply together. That with that, which is right here, and the eight with the zero, which is right there, okay? Now, if I wanna go to the top row, but the second column, I gotta do the top row guys times the second column guys. And so that's here, negative one times the four, and then the eight times the seven. Then the middle row times the first column, three times three, eight times zero. Middle row times the second column, three times four, eight times seven. Then lastly, the bottom row times the first column. So zero times three and four times zero, and then bottom row times the last column. So zero times four and four times seven, okay? Then it looks like I did it in my head. I did this, got this, this, got that, so on and so forth until I got here. I could just type all of that in my calculator, couldn't I? And it'll give me negative three. And type all of that, it'll give me 52. All of this, nine, all of that, 68, so on and so forth. Okay, so you don't have to do this step. It's just, I don't think I had my calculator with me. So I was just trying to use the calculator as least amount as possible when I was doing it, okay? Okay, now here's of course an example where it's not possible. If I took these two matrices and I wrote down his size, he has three columns, but only two, I mean, sorry, three rows, but only two columns. So it's a three by two. This one has three rows, but three columns. So it's a three by three. 
Do the inside ones match? They are not the same, right? You've got a two here and a three there. So when they're not the same, it means it's impossible. But in the computer, in order for you to write that, you have to shrink your matrix to a one by one. So back over here in your web assign, um, when you get to this problem, make sure you shrink this down to a one by one, and then you can type in the word impossible, okay? Don't put, unless you're gonna sit there and put impossible in every single one of these boxes, <laughs> right? I don't wanna do that. So I just shrunk it down to a one by one and wrote impossible one time, okay? And it accepted it, it told me it was correct, right? Number 14, let's go see if number 14 was right. Yeah, see, <laughs> I got all those other ones wrong, but <laughs> that's okay. Okay, so let's see, where are we? We just did that one. Okay, now number 15 is just getting a little bit extra. That's all, it's not anything that we haven't done already. It's just, they want us to practice more with that multiplication. So the cool thing about this is they are two by twos, right? So the middle dimensions are gonna match and the end dimensions are gonna be a two by two, aren't they? And it really wouldn't have mattered if I put A's dimensions first and then B's dimensions second or the other way around, B's dimensions first and A's dimensions second. Everything's two by twos, right? Even if I have to do A squared, that's A times A. A's dimensions are two by two. If I multiply by another A, it's a two by two. So for all of these, they match. And for all of them, we're gonna end up with two by twos. All three of these products, okay? So I went ahead and started going through that motion. So the top row times these two entries gave me this. Top row times the second column gave me these numbers. Bottom row times the first column gave me these numbers. And then bottom row times that second column gave me these values, okay? When you compute all of that, you end up with negative one, compute this, 27, compute this, you get two, and compute that, you get 26, okay? Now they're doing it the other way around. So they're putting B in the front and then A next to it, right? So the order switched. Notice A was first and then B, and now B is first and then A. I notice it matters. Are those the same answer? They're not the same, right? So it matters which order you multiply them in. Make sure you're doing the correct order. So when I put B in front, I'm doing the top row times the first column. So I get these entries. Top row times the second column. So I get these entries. Bottom row times the first column gives me these. And then bottom row times the second column gives me these, <coughs> excuse me. After I do all these computations, I end up with these four values, okay? Now for the A squared, we're just multiplying A, but times itself, right? That's what squared means. So I put A and another A. And then I do row times the column, that's these multiplications, row times the column, this operations, bottom row times first column gives me these, and bottom row times the second column gives me these. After all those computations, we end up with these four values, okay? So just be very, very careful with that problem, especially the AB and the BA. Pay special attention to what they're asking you to do in the directions. You're only gonna have to do, I think, one multiplication problem out of the whole test. So pay attention to which one's getting multiplied by which one, okay? Because one way might be possible and then the other way might not be. So make sure you know which one you're supposed to be doing, okay? Okay, number 16 is a tiny two by two and the directions just say find the inverse. For the two by twos, they are way easier than the three by threes. Two by twos, we have a cute formula that we can just use, okay? So this is the formula, I wrote it down here. Um, it is on the test, I showed it to you earlier. So we're gonna apply this formula. So all you have to do is know that this is A, this is B, this is C, and this is D, right? It just goes like the way you read it, right? Don't you go left to right when you read, and then you go from top to bottom also if there's multiple lines, okay? So once you label them, it's one over A, D minus B, C. So one over A times D minus B times C, okay? 
And then I swapped these two guys over. See how they swapped? And then those two guys didn't swap, but they changed signs, right? That's the formula. Then I computed all of that stuff over there in the front and I got 13 minus 12, which is just one. This is just the one, isn't it? One over one. So when I multiply one times all of these, is it gonna change anything? No, so it just ended up being this, okay? If this was not a one, if this was a one half or something, then make sure that you multiply everybody by that one half to get your final answer, okay? Okay, this is the one that's not as nice, right? Because it's a three by three. So we don't have a cute little formula to do. We have a process to do, but not a cute formula, right? So the whole process is to write this inverse down, then write the identity, and then make this side look like the identity. Now, first step is to make this a one, but it's already a one. So we were good there, okay? Next is to use that one to turn these two guys into zeros. And since they're both fives, wouldn't making this negative five work for both of them? Okay. So I did negative five times row one plus row two to get me my new row two. But then I also did negative five times row one and add row three to get the new row three. So all six of these entries times negative five is negative five, negative five, negative five, negative five, zero, zero and the same over there. Then I wrote row two underneath. Over here, I wrote row three underneath, and then we did all the computations. So row one was good. I wrote that one exactly as it was, but row two is now gonna be this, okay? And then row three is going to be this. So I've got that there. Then next, this column is completely done. So I'm gonna move to the next column. One has to come first. So I need this guy to be a one first. Okay, always get the ones first and then use it to get the zeros, right? So we got to multiply by the reciprocal, which the reciprocal of two is one over two. So zero times one half is zero, two times one half is one, one times one half is one half, negative five times one half is negative five halves, that guy a half and then zero is just still zero. Now I've got to use this one to change this guy and this guy to a zero, okay? So this would need to be a negative one in order to add that and get a zero, right? So I did negative one times row two plus the row one and the, my new row one. I'm also gonna need this to turn into a negative three, add these rows together, it'll cancel it out. So I did negative three times row two plus the row three to get me my new row three. So here it goes. All of row two multiplied by negative means this stays zero, turns negative, turns negative, turns positive, turns negative, and then stays zero. Multiplying all these guys by negative three, stays zero, turns into negative three, negative three halves, positive 15 over two, negative three halves, and stays zero. Then I put the row one underneath all of that stuff, right? All of row one underneath, all of row three, underneath and then we did all of our little computations i did have to use a calculator for some of these it's okay if you do right that's not a big deal you just want the right answers down here so like this one i definitely did in the calculator negative five over two minus five i wouldn't have known that i had to type in the calculator okay but now i know my new row one it's got a bunch of fractions in it my row two is exactly the same as it was and then my row three is now changed into all of those things Lots and lots of fractions, but somehow they go away at the end. It's weird. Okay, so my second row is completely done. Now I'm gonna move on to the third row and I need this guy to turn into a one, right? It's a fraction though. When I take the reciprocal of it, it's two over one, okay? So I did the reciprocal of this times the third row. So zero times two over one is zero, same thing. These guys together is gonna give me one. When I multiplied those in the calculator, I got five. These, you get negative three. And then these two, you get two, okay? Now I've got to use this one to turn these into zeros. But they're the same number, aren't they? So it's kind of like that business that happened up there with the fives. I just need to multiply this by negative one half 
and it'll actually turn both of those into zeros, right? So that was my next step. So I did negative one half times row three plus the top row. And then I also did negative one half times row three times the second row so that I could get those zeros in those spots. So after all of those computations, I ended up with this and this and magically there's no more fractions, right? When I rewrite my matrix, the top row, um, row one becomes this. So row one is now one, zero, zero, one, neg one, negative one. Row two became all of these entries. So it's there. And then row three, we didn't change. So row three stayed exactly the same as it was, okay? But once this is your identity, this is your inverse. And so I just said, that's my inverse, okay? In the computer, once you stop, you just have to make sure you pick the one that looks like this, okay? It just takes forever, those two problems. So we already kind of went over this one, 18, how do you use the inverse? You basically have to find the inverse of this. Once you know the inverse of that, you just multiply it by the constant thing. So if I would have known my inverse was whatever that was in fractions, all I had to do is multiply it by the negative eight over one. Because I did it the way I did it, I was able to avoid the fractions until the end, okay? Now, the last few things are going to have to do with those determinants. We just learned those yesterday, right? The determinant stuff. So this is all the determinant stuff. So nice one, two by two, find the determinant. You know that if you go from top left to bottom right, you're going to keep that sign the same, right? So it's negative 18. But if you go in the other direction, from bottom left to top right, this direction, you're gonna change the sign. It really don't matter because it's zero, right? But you would subtract those guys, the ones that go in this direction. You keep the same signs for these guys, you change the signs for the ones going the other way, okay? So then I end up with just negative 18. Now for this one, it's a three by three, but I don't have enough um, rows. So I rewrote these three rows. You don't have to, you could have just rewrote the two columns over there. But then I took these two columns and I rewrote them again, right? And I need to do that because I need a diagonal of three in order for me to do this correctly, okay? So I need to have three diagonals of three. So one, two, three, and now half, right? So you multiply, 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 I get negative 36. Multiply, 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 I got zero. Multiply all of these, I got zero. Now you go in the other direction. This is not enough. So go over here, multiply all three of those, you get zero. Multiply all three of these, you get zero. And multiply all three of those, you get zero. All of these guys, you're going to add together. All the ones at the top, you're going to subtract, okay? So what I did was I took the negative 36 and then I added that zero and added that zero. And then I subtracted all of these three zeros. You see those, right? They're just zeros for some reason, so it didn't really matter you end up with just the negative 36, okay? There is another one in a minute, it has a whole bunch of them. See that process a whole bunch more in a little bit, okay? Now 21 is a small one, it asks us to do the Kramer's rule. So we need to do the coefficient matrix first. You have to do that one first because that's the one you're gonna divide by at the end, okay? So I have to do just the four, the negative three, the six, and the nine just by themselves as they were, okay? So I went this way, that one's a positive 36. I went this way, that's a negative 18. But what happens when you change a sign? Doesn't it become a positive 18? So that's where I get the 54 from, okay? Then same thing here, but when you're doing dx, the x column has to get replaced with the constants. So notice that the constants are here for x instead of x, okay? But the Y column stays exactly the same, okay? And then you do your computations. You multiply those across, you multiply these across, but make sure you change that guy's sign, okay? And you'll get your number there. Now for DY, you're gonna replace the Y column with the answers. So notice that the Y column turned into negative 25 and then three. The X column though stayed exactly the same. It's only this subscript that you replace, okay? 
Now, when I have that, I'm going to do multiply. I get 12 and then multiply here, but make sure you change the sign. So it won't be negative 150. It'll actually turn into positive 150, right? And then you get this. And then now the last thing is, is if you want to figure out what X is, you put DX over D. So 216 over 54. If I want to know what just Y is, I'm going to do DY over D. And then when you simplify these, it turns out that this one is negative four and this one is a positive three. And so that's where these answers came from. Okay. Now I think we have another one for three by three. So, oh, not yet. I saw this problem and I thought it was interesting. So before we get to the three by three, and there's two of them, um, I wanted you, I wanted to talk about this problem here. Okay, so this one says to solve using Kramer's rule if possible, something like that, okay? Um, I mentioned this, okay? I could have stopped as soon as I got here, I could have stopped and I could have just said that it's impossible to do it by Kramer's rule on the review. There's a problem though on the test and it says to solve it by any method, okay? And I just want you to know that if you do choose to use Kramer's rule for that one problem that you have a choice to use whatever method you want, that getting this does not tell you whether or not there's infinitely many solutions or no solutions, okay? So I'm just mentioning it, that's why I have all this stuff written under my hands instead of just telling you the answer was impossible. In the homework, it just says, apply Kramer's rule if possible, if not, write impossible. So the review says, but the test, you don't know what's gonna happen on that one problem, right? So if you choose to use Kramer's rule on that one problem, this is not gonna tell you anything, okay? Because what happens when I try to find D, the coefficients? I have four, two, and eight, four. And when I do my um, determinant, I actually get 16 minus 16, which is zero. So remember, in order for you to get X, you're gonna have to do DX over D. And in order to get Y, you're gonna have to do DY over D. Could I divide by a zero right there and right there? You can't, it's gonna tell you undefined, right? So you're not going to be able to tell me what the answer is, okay? All I know is that it doesn't have one solution and that's it. I don't know whether there's no solution or infinitely many number of solutions, okay? I don't know that based off of what I've got so far. All I know is that this thing's not gonna have one small easy answer, right? Here's X, here's Y, I'm done, okay? So in order to figure out whether it's no solution or an infinitely many number of solutions, you're gonna have to do another method because the Kramer's rule obviously doesn't apply to this one, okay? So I tried gauss jardin again, if you do not like this method, don't do it this method, go do it substitution or elimination or whatever other method you like to use, okay? Whichever one, you don't have to do this one. I just chose to do this one, but that's me. So I took this one and I tried to solve it gauss jardin I wanted to make that a one, so I multiplied by one fourth, and it gave me one half and negative one half. Then I wanted to make this guy a zero, so I multiplied row one by a negative eight to add it to row two, and that should give me a zero in row two. So these guys times negative eight gave me these numbers, and then row two is right underneath. When I combined them, I got zero, zero, and eight. Okay, my next focus would have been to change this to a one, right? But there's no reciprocal of zero, that's undefined, okay? So since I can't turn that guy to a one, I need to stop. The top equation tells me X plus one half Y equals negative one half. But the bottom equation tells me I have nothing on the left-hand side, but it somehow equals eight, right? This is a false statement. Zero does not equal eight, does it? So then that's how I know that it's no solution. You can't say it's no solution just because you get zero up here, okay? Because getting zero up here only tells you that it doesn't have one solution, but it could have none or it could have infinitely many, okay? You don't know which one until you try some other method, okay? And doing it this method, I found out that there's no solution. But in WebAssign, 
for the review problem, all you need to do is state that it's impossible because D is zero up here, okay? And you wouldn't be able to divide by that D in the Cramer's rule. Okay, so 23 and 24 are both literally the same thing. It's just um, two different functions at the beginning, systems. So for 23, it has this system. And then for 24, it has like a cute little circuit problem. Um, and it gives you this system. I'm not gonna do this one because it's literally the exact same problem. I don't know why. I guess my computer just algorithmically generated the exact same problem as the problem we did in 10.5. So we did this problem yesterday in 10.5 and it's literally the same exact numbers, okay? So since I already walked you guys through that one, I'm not gonna do it again because it's exactly the same thing. I think when we did it, we got negative 11 over two and positive 11 over two, but it's the same as his decimals, okay? Um, so we have that one, but this one has new numbers. So I'll go over this one. Okay, so if I'm trying to use Kramer's rule, I have to keep that same idea, just do the coefficients for the D, okay? So just the one, two, three, negative two, one, negative one, and then three, negative three, and two. Rewrite the first two over here, and then you can start doing your multiplications all going that way, right? Remember the bottom ones you add, the top ones you subtract. Okay, or you can think of it as the bottom ones, you keep the same sign, the top ones, you're going to change those signs, right? Either way, you think of it. I think I had different, I think I did minuses over here and then over here, I didn't do it anymore. So it's weird. You just have to choose. So when I multiply all three of these guys together, I got two. When I multiplied all of these together, I got negative six. When I multiplied these guys together, I got positive 18. And then the other way. When I multiplied those, I got nine. When I multiplied all three of these, I got positive three. And when I multiplied all three of those, I got negative eight. So the bottom ones I took first, it stays a positive two. This will stay a negative six. See, don't do this. I don't like that one. So two, negative six, positive 18. Up here, this turns into minus nine, minus three, and that one turns into plus eight, right? So these are the same signs, these are the opposite signs, okay? And then once I typed all of that in my calculator, it told me it was 10, okay? Now we're gonna do dx. So for dx, you have to replace the x column with the constants over here. So notice that the x column became the negative five, the 10, and the negative 17. The y and the z columns stay exactly as they say, as they were from d, okay? just the X column changed. So I rewrote these two columns over here on the side and then I did all the multiplications. So when I multiplied these three, I got negative 10. When I multiplied these three, I got a positive 34. These three, I got a negative 90. I multiplied those, I had to use my calculator, I got negative 51. I multiplied those, negative 15. I multiplied these, I got positive 40. So the bottom ones stay true to their sign, right? The top ones will change signs. So notice that they all changed. And then put that in your calculator and it came out to negative 40, okay? We'll do the next one. So now the Y column is gonna become the constants, okay? So this middle column becomes the negative five, the 10 and the negative 17. The X column stays exactly the same as the original. And so does the Z column. Then I rewrote these first two columns over here. And then I started the multiplication. So multiply, we got 20, multiply positive 15, multiply positive 102, multiply positive 90, positive 17, and positive 20. Bottom ones stay true to their signs. The top ones will change signs. So notice that all those became negative, okay? And then you combine all of those in your calculator and I got 10. Last one, now you're replacing the Z column with the constants, right? So there's my constants. The X column and the Y column stay exactly the same as the D, okay? And then you take those two columns and you rewrite them on the outside and you start doing all your multiplication, right? 
So these three, negative 17. These three gave me 60. These three, negative 30. These, negative 15. These gave me negative 30. And then these gave me a positive 68. So all of these stay the exact same signs, but all of these guys change signs, right? And then you combine them all in your calculator and you get negative 10. So final, how do you get the final answer? dx over d, dy over d, dz over d. And when I simplified each of them, I got those three numbers, okay? And so then that was my result. That is everything from this section. Again, this one's the same thing, it's just another problem. But we did it, exactly the same problem last class, okay? Um, hopefully you get lucky and you have the same numbers, otherwise you have to do it all over again, right? Um, if you did the 10.5, the last problem in 10.5, see if they're the same numbers, because <laughs> then you don't have to redo the whole thing. But if you want practice, go ahead and redo it. Um, does anybody have any questions? I want to go look real quick. So you do have, look, if it's a two by two, you have the uh, Kramer's rule right there for the two by two. And if you have three variables, you have it there as well. I'm gonna go over this statement again, because this is telling you how to do the three by three determinants. It says to find the determinant of a three by three, augment with the first two columns. What that means is rewrite those first two columns on the side, okay? Once you write those first two columns on the side, then you're gonna add the three diagonal entries. So when you go from upper left, okay, upper left, which means from this direction down to lower right, all of those numbers you're gonna multiply and then you're gonna add those together, okay? Then when you go in the other way, when you go from lower left to upper right, so when I'm going upwards like this, right? All those numbers you end up at the top, those get subtracted, right? Why we change those signs, okay? Um, and then that's it. That's all you need to know about that um, process right there. Okay, I think I do have, so there are 10 questions, they're 10 points each. I'm only doing one if you, you know, bubble or square or whatever the correct answer. And then if your notation is good, it's just one point. If it's okay, it's half a point. If it's just all bad, then there's no point. Um, and then your solution, so your explanation. Some of them you don't have to do an explanation. So for those, I'm not gonna be doing explanation points, right? It's just all or nothing. Um, but then there's some, that, I mean, there's no way. If you're doing Kramer's rule, you have to write something down, right? So those I'll be looking to see because sometimes you'll get the wrong answer, but it's like, because you wrote down a negative one instead of a positive one, something silly, right? There's no reason you should be getting deducted half your points for a little sign error when you were copying, okay? So that's why I definitely will need to see your papers so I can see what's going on. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. If you're gonna do it online, then yes, make sure you do all of this. So that way you don't get points deducted when you upload your stuff, right? But if you didn't do it in class tomorrow, then you'll have the paper. You could just circle your answers, okay? Does anybody have any extra questions? Sure. Yes, I didn't, but yes, it does. You can do that. It's the same thing. Technically, you're not supposed to, but it works the same. Technically, instead of doing A minus B, you're supposed to do A plus a negative one times B. Right? But it's the same thing. It literally, the same, it's going to have, the mechanic part of it is going to be equivalent. Okay? So I literally just did entry minus the entry and it came out the same. What made a difference? One plus and then a negative two. Aren't I still gonna get the negative one like I did, right? Oh, you can't see my paper. You're like, what? <laughs> so it says A minus B in the book, they tell you to do A plus a negative one times B, which means that that guy would have turned into negative two, right? So I would have done one plus a negative two but you still get negative one, the same answer, okay? So yeah, you can do it this way or you can do it that way, it's your choice. I think it's easier to just do it this way. Let's put a little thingy so nobody thinks that's part of the problem.
Okay, any other questions? Okay, we'll make sure that you have your homework done, you have your review done, and that way you get that practice in for this test, okay? And then I will see you tomorrow. If I do not see you tomorrow, I will add you to the online test. Because right now I don't think any of y'all see the online test because y'all are in a face-to-face -face class. But if you want the online test, just don't show up at eight o'clock and I'll add you to the online test, okay? But you guys have a good one. And if I don't see you tomorrow because you choose to take it online, then happy Thanksgiving. Bye-bye. Okay.